Hey everyone, it's been a minute, been deep in it. I wonder if maybe some of you have been as well. Um, I wanted to just share a moment with you. The, in terms of the seasonal wheel, we're moving here in the Northern Hemisphere from winter solstice into Imbolc. Imbolc is the first light, the first milk. It's the crocuses just beginning to emerge from under the snow. There is an incredible purity and potency and beauty to Imbolc. It's the cross-quarter holy day between solstice, uh, winter solstice and spring equinox. So I have, you know, all the seasonal ritual immersions are now discounted and available for you if you want to work with them on your own. And Imbolc is, is there. So I'll put all that below. Regardless of whether or not you want to work with that specific companion guided ritual immersion and the practices that are there, I wanted to invite you into a consideration of what we turned to in Imbolc, what we turn to in, the, in this way is the flame that remembers. And what is that, you know, what is that for us? And how does it, how do darkness and light work together here? So when we come into winter solstice, we let the darkness fully incubate and nurture and quiet us. We release into darkness. We release into the fallow and we let ourselves be restored. It is a place of real, it's nurturance, it's allowance, it's being restored, right, by releasing into darkness, right? One of the beautiful things that welcoming darkness does is it extinguishes all the false lights. So <laughs> if you think of just like letting darkness wash through you and absorb into you as a nourishment, one of the things that it's doing is it's starting to extinguish all the excess, all the overstimulation, all the rhetoric, all the conversations, all the all the thoughts you've had, all the insights, all the insights other people have, I mean, just the, <laughs> the crazy amount of light that ultimately maybe isn't completely false light, but is kind of transient excess light. When we move into Imbolc, what we are welcoming forward is from the darkness, the one pure flame. So I invite you to turn toward that. This in this moment in time, however you do that, you know, in the in the ritual immersion, we work with literally lighting a candle and letting it companion. Let the flame be a companion and sit with the flame and ask who she is, if she's the one pure flame that is inextinguishable in the darkness, right? So darkness washes through, and it extinguishes all the false lights. It lets everything come back to its root and rest. But the one true light, the inextinguishable, remains. And that is what we guide ourselves by. That is what actually brings clarity. But we have to turn toward it. We have to remember what it is. You know, that the, what, this thing about being in life and needing to remember <laughs> and having so many reasons and coercions and distractions that make it and, and pain that makes us forget all of this that's a real thing so we come into the flame that remembers and she remembers on our behalf right we come back into remembrance and a tasting again what is that again because it is none of the other lights <laughs> it's none of the other things you don't even have to worry about whether or not they're true or not. That's, they're just, it's not any of those things. It's the single flame inside of you. And I'm going to share the invocation for Imbolc with you. So this is the invocation that um, was part of Imbolc and is part of the ritual immersion. Um, it's the invocation as we move into Imbolc out of solstice. So light the steady flame, the one that can only guide you. Call the companion to your side. In holy darkness, your veil was silence, your refuge complete. Now, woman, be clothed with the dawn. Right? So in Imbolc, what we're invoking, what we're turning toward, is this ever-renewing, holy light that always emerges from the darkness and is never extinguished by it that only becomes more clear when things are dark, only becomes more clear when things are unknown, right? If we turn toward her, if we let darkness and the not knowing extinguish all other things. So in that invocation, light the steady flame,
the one that can only guide you. What that means is when we're talking about this flame that's inside of you and that we represent on the altar with our candle, we represent as we bring the flame, the, the light into the darkness, it, it can only guide you because that's its nature. It will never lead you astray. It always brings you back here. It always reminds you and remembers for you who you are and what is clear and what is true and where the heart is. Right? So important right now in these times. Right? So light the steady flame. And, and you know, in our ritual immersion, we light a flame in the darkness and we sit with and we ask her to tell us who she is. There's a real deep personal ritual communion invited. Call the companion to your side. Meaning, light the flame. Call this to your side to be with you. You know, remember that you are not alone and that the, the light of real truth beyond all the many expressions of truth, the light of real truth that you can feel and know and that stays with you always, that will companion you, right? The flame companions you. In holy darkness, your veil with silence, your refuge complete. You know, in solstice, in winter solstice, we've, we have allowed ourselves to go just deep into the fallow and be in the darkness and rest in the darkness and not try to muster up any light and just really let things be quiet, right? Surrender to the weariness because that's where restoration happens. Right? That's the only way it happens. But now, woman, be clothed with the dawn. And when we're turning towards Imbolc and we're turning towards the light and the new life of Imbolc, it is so delicate you know however you experience that or express this or turn toward it know that what you're turning toward is that it's the dawn right it's that the delicacy and the beauty and the subtle power of the dawn clothing you out of the darkness Right, it's still there's still an effortlessness here, the, in in solstice and in the dark and in the fallow. There's an effortlessness. You're just allowing yourself to be held, you're allowing yourself to be restored and nurtured, and this light in bulk, this first light, this first milk, it is holy nurturance still, right? And there's an effortlessness still. You're allowing yourself to be clothed with the dawn, to be infused with the pure light. Right, that's what we're turning toward here. And you know, how do you do that? You know, <laughs> obviously the ritual immersion has all sorts of things, including practice and things like that. Practice, the, the whole ritual immersion is there, right? It's, a, it's the invocation, it's the, the hour and a half first webinar, it's the practices, it's the guided ritual, and then it's the, the completion, right? It's the whole thing. If you don't do that or you want to create something on your own, what I would really invite you to remember, what would be three things I would invite you to remember to help you really turn towards the first light, the first milk? Make sure that you are first attuning to darkness, that you really let yourself enter darkness in order to have all the false lights extinguished, right? And what that means is you, you turn toward your alliance with nurturing darkness. However, you know, I'm, I'm kind of offering these ideas for like a personal ritual, you know, of whatever kind, a ceremony of whatever kind makes sense to you. Because we align with the seasonal wheel in order to align with something bigger, <laughs> more harmonious, and more trustworthy than all the bewilderment of human culture and human change, right? So it's a really important deeply grounding, nurturing, orienting thing to do, to just note the turns of the wheel and take a moment and presence yourself in them. It will give you, it will give you place. It's also going to give you a certain amount of peace, right? Because you are choosing to be connected and rooted in something that is not just transcendent, that's here with you, that is part of creation but that is also beyond all of what moves in your life and in the human experience, right? We're aligning with something bigger than ourselves. So, you know, for me, the ways to do that here with in bulk are to 
somehow drink darkness, really welcome her in as a cooling, soothing, quieting, clarifying, purifying force in relationship to light. And then to actually invite, allow the true light to either reveal herself or maybe you light a candle in the darkness and you sit and you watch and you see, what is, who is she, you ask, right? And really take it in and look towards the delicacy, look towards the purity, look towards look towards what happens in your heart you know trust your heart in this that when you are when you are wanting to take a moment and really fill yourself with the life that is now emerging truly the new life that emerges again and again without our will force this is just something we get to be part of to really fill yourself with that, know that it's going to be a relief to you. It's going to settle you back into yourself, right? It's going to illuminate and irrigate you. This is a light. This is a love. This is a presence that's going to irrigate your being, right? Bring you closer to your own holiness. Right? And allow you to come in from all of the other lights. Right? I recognize that this is somewhat abstract, but, but this is because what I'm inviting you into is your own personal revelation and connection with this moment in the wheel. And how that's going to take form, what that's going to look like for you should be very personal and should kind of reveal itself in the moment. So that's my, in, my invitation to you. Light the steady flame, the one that can only guide you. That's its only purpose, its only nature, right? Light the steady flame, the steady flame, steady. Look for that. Let yourself release for a moment all the things that are whatever they are, but they're not steady. Find her, find the steady flame. Call her, call the companion to your side. Summon, right? Summon your right place as part of this creation, as part of the first milk, the first light, right? In holy darkness, your veil was silenced, your refuge complete. You can emerge from that refuge. We can emerge from nurturance and from kind of the shelter that we take when we need it. And as we emerge, we let ourselves be clothed with the dawn, right? We, we emerge into the exquisite. And we emerge into a certain kind of glory, right? And this is all what we do before, you know, in the wheel, this is what, this is the movement it's teaching us the movement of how to move in from darkness into light, from the hidden sacred to the revealed, right? We move from the hidden sacred, the darkness of solstice, into in bulk this first emergence, and this is how we do it. We keep it pure, we keep it simple, because what's coming is the fullness of spring, right? And then the blossoming and the passion of Beltane, and then the ripeness and the full bright days and the revelations of the summer solstice into the fruition of Lamas, right? Into the pause of autumnal equinox and into Samhain and into solstice again, right? So we're retraining ourselves as we, as we attune to the seasonal wheel and we ask, how do you move? You know, <laughs> beyond everything that's confusing, just look, how do you move? How does life keep re keep resurrecting herself? In the Northern Hemisphere, this is how it happens. And there's an offering here. So I welcome you. I join with you in this uh, welcoming of the first light and the first milk. May it bless you. May it, may it breathe through you. Right? And may it clarify for you and bring peace. Bring peace. Blessed be.